Hello everybody, this is CJ Wiley on the road again. Just uh, walked a little trail to uh, get outside. It's my therapy. But anyway, uh, you know that interview with Keith McCready went, went really well. And man, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, it brought on memories of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff we could talk about but uh you know i just wanted to break the ice and uh get keith and stroke i'll assure you i talked to him earlier and uh he sounded like grady seasons again <laughs> I mean, you know like everything you got to get in stroke man you got to uh it doesn't matter what you do um, and he's a little rusty you know he hasn't been doing a lot of interviews and uh and i knew that but the next one we do <laughs> I'll assure you, uh, is going to be really strong. It's funny, one of the uh, the older champions that I know listened to that podcast, and, uh, and we were talking about Eddie Burton. Like, I didn't realize how good Eddie Burton really was. I mean, Keith told me it didn't come out in the interview, but uh, Eddie Burton was a was a tremendous player, and when I saw him. I think I played him, but I, I, I really can't remember it. You know, something needs to jog my memory. If I knew where I played him, maybe. But, uh, man, he looked he looked uh, a lot older than he actually was. I think he was from around where I'm here in Sanford, uh, North Carolina. I think he's from, from uh, South Carolina, uh, down by, I don't know, Greenville, somewhere around in that area. But I didn't know he was out in L.A. so much. But uh, anyway, my uh, another champion player called me up and he said, man, Eddie played so good that and, and you know, this is back in the 70s now because, uh, you know, things were different, you know, uh, uh, especially in California. So my friend who will go nameless, <laughs> he said, I took a hit of acid and watched Eddie play for a few hours and I swear my game went up two notches. <laughs> Just by watching him play. So that's funny, man. But uh, I was really interested in that cue stick that Keith, uh, you know, there's one left. I have no horse in the race, but, uh, you know, I think it's a tremendous deal. So I asked Keith, you know, why why it was so good, because it's his uh, specifications, and, and I didn't know what that meant. And what he said made a lot of sense. He said, man, it's good to play with a, a smaller butted cue. You know, the butt. Uh, and, I, you know, I've stumbled on that, but I didn't realize, uh, you know, really it was just coming to me. But he verified it. Because I play a lot better when I choke up to the front of the cue a lot of times. But I don't think it's as much choking up as it is the cue is just smaller up towards the front of the uh, Rap. So I'm really going to experiment with that. Another thing he said that I totally agree with is the cue has to be front heavy. I used to, I mean, I balance uh, the cue. I, I balance it and I look at where the balance point is relative to the front of the wrap. And, and I always liked it, you know, two or three inches in front. I mean, sometimes the wrap's a little bit, you know, placed a little differently. But, but I like a real front heavy cue. And another thing he said was... You want to have the shaft an inch longer than normal. So that would change the balance as well. And, and I have experimented with that, but I'll tell you the truth. I haven't, uh, I didn't do it with any diligence. You know, I have one that's 29 inches, but I haven't, uh, I haven't really experimented with it with an open mind because it did throw off the balance a little bit. And I just wasn't sure if I liked it. I'm going to try it again though. <laughs> Hey, I'll change my mind about anything with more information, but I mean, I'm a, I'm a serious researcher, you know, so I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. And if it doesn't pass the, uh, the smell test, so to speak, <laughs> but you know, we all have a little bit different tastes and equipment and the cue that I'm using now, a friend of mine bought for a hundred dollars and I, uh, Danny Biley is his name up in Lexington, Kentucky. And I used it, and it's a real plain cue, but I really liked it. And I told him I really liked it. I said, man, this, this reminds me of the cue that I used when I was with Dalton Leone that I ran five racks in a row every day with. 
because it was just a house cue. And uh, Keith said that too, you know, the house cue, there's uh once in a while you'll stumble on one of those. It's just incredibly good because they don't have to be fancy to hit like a, a three or $4,000 cue, you know, and, and the one I've got, Danny just gave it to me and that's what I've been using. And I don't know what kind it is. So then I screwed a uh, shaft that I don't know what, I didn't know what that was either. But I was down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and a friend of mine, Mike Johnson, he has Jensen cues. And he's he's uh, he's put milk dead tips on my cues, and uh, he's made me some shafts. And uh, so it didn't surprise me what happened. He said, uh, what kind of shaft do you use? I said, well, honestly, Mike, I don't know. And he said, can I see it? So I showed it to him, and he went over and looked at it and looked at it, you know, under a pool light. Came back, he said, man, that's one of my shafts. <laughs> I said, that figures. I mean, he makes really good shafts. I mean, the wood he uses is, uh, you know, highly seasoned, and that makes a big difference because I tend to leave my cues in the car when it's hot, and uh, if the wood isn't good, they'll warp. So uh, that's the only reason I used a carbon shaft for a while because I knew it wouldn't warp, and I was in Florida, <laughs> and I knew I'd leave my cue in the car, and at least they don't warp. But they don't have the, uh, they just don't have the feel, you know. I mean, there is some attribute. If, you know, if you have trouble drawing your ball or something, maybe carbon's better. But, or you, uh, you know, if your stroke, you know, that, that deflection is more in how you're hitting the ball. Like my, my stroke deflects just a, a little bit, but I do it on purpose because I want to throw the ball in and cut it just a little bit thinner than uh, what I'm lined up. And whether I'm using inside or outside, but when I use inside, it's the touch of inside. It's it's literally like a hair of inside. I'm just favoring the inside of the ball because I just want to throw it slightly. And what that equates to is about a half a pocket, um, about eight feet away. I got a certain shot that I shoot, and I'll uh, I'll get the shaft a little bit bigger than I like, and I'll I'll uh, sand it down with like. 1,000 sandpaper or 600 sandpaper if I'm trying to take some size off. But once it hits that perfect size, it throws the ball a half a pocket eight feet away. So uh, that's just how I do it. So you want some deflection. But most people are deflecting the ball too much because they extend too much through the ball. They think they got to follow through like four or five inches or six inches, and that's Man, watch Shane Van Boning and Sky Woodward. Watch me. I, I've i seen Sky Woodward where every shot he shoots is about a two-inch follow-through, you know, especially on a bar table. But that's the most, the most accurate way to hit a ball. The more you extend, the more it influences the ball. So if you, uh, if you do hit it off center, it will um, deflect more. The way I hit the ball, if I accidentally hit it off farther than I want, it really doesn't matter much. I mean, it's still going to be under control. <clears throat> so I still make the ball, but it probably won't hit the side of the pocket I want. That's how come I always watch where the, uh, you know, where the object ball hits the pocket, because that's really important, important information, just like shooting a pistol. You want to see where the bullet hits so that if you're shooting high to the left, you can calibrate a little bit lower to the right. So this is common sense, but a lot of people just don't know it. Players don't know it. And you're not going to learn this stuff in a lot of books and videos and whatnot because they're trying to sell you a shaft <laughs> for six hundred dollars. And like I said, my my cue I didn't I didn't pay anything for it. You know, uh, Danny Biley gave me the uh, butt and uh, Mike Johnson gave me the shaft. <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? Mike Johnson with Jensen Cues. Uh, shout out to him though. He he really is strong. Man, he had a motorcycle accident a few years ago and uh, lost his leg. And you never know it, man. He gets around just like, uh, I mean, I, I walk around with him. I, I can't tell. So that's, uh, that's something to be said for that. So Keith McCready, the earthquake, we called him LA Keith. And, uh, he was a serious money player. You know, we, we just didn't hit our primes at the same time. He was before me. So, uh, you know, but it would have been a gunfight, I will assure you that, <laughs> and it would have taken a long time, whoever won, because uh, neither one of us would quit, you know, it'd been a 
probably a 20 hour session or 30 hours I would say I could play really strong my best play is between 20 and 30 hours I, I hit my my peak at 20 and I can maintain it for 10 and then I start falling off so uh, but I'm in better shape now than I've been in uh, than I was in when I was playing my best pool so I don't know but it takes uh, that takes practice too you know the endurance bar to pool let me see I gotta find this turn off here or I'll get lost so anyway, next time uh, Keith and I do a podcast, we're going to do it live. So you guys have any questions, and uh, and you can ask me some questions now between now and then, and we'll incorporate them in. But we want you know some some uh, participation because I know there's things you guys want to ask uh, Keith. You know, like the Q stick thing. I'm just giving you kind of a a preliminary that uh, he likes. I didn't ask him the weight. I think I think 19 ounce. Uh, but he the the important thing was he likes him balanced forward. He likes a one inch longer shaft than normal, which would be 29 inches, I presume. And um, and the skinnier butt. And I tell you what, I think that's exactly right. He said especially how I hold the cue. Um, because, you know, I hold the cue a lot like Shane, or Shane holds it like me, however you want to look at it. But he holds it a lot farther back than I do, so it's hard to tell unless you've got a seasoned eye. But we're, we pre-cock our wrist up so that when we go through into the ball, it releases more, like cocking a hammer. If you cock a hammer up to start with, that's the position you are back, and then when you go through, it releases. It's like a spring that releases at the moment of contact. It's not, you know, they, they, they describe it as a, uh, I mean, the pendulum thing, that's more about tempo. You know, I don't believe in the, in the trying to do a pendulum uh, with the, the way the human body is shaped. I mean, you need to drop your elbow a little bit as you go forward. It, it, the elbow steers the stroke, but the shoulder can't drop. You do not want to move your shoulder, see? So... Uh, but just like hammering a nail or throwing a fishing uh, line or a lure, you know, the elbow comes back and then it goes forward and then the wrist releases. And that's that's the same thing in pool. Everybody's a little bit different, but but uh, but that wrist release is very important. That's one thing that every champion player has to do well to be able to get the ball around, move it around. And as... Uh, you know, Dennis Ercolo, I asked him about his grip, and, and he holds it, you know, it looks like just with his uh, wrapped around his thumb, you know, like this. He uses a little bit of the second finger, but he's holding it firm. I mean, he's releasing that wrist. I mean, he told me the, the grip pressure and everything. I mean, I asked him. Now, on finesse shots, it can be lighter, but holding the cue light, um, you know, for firm shots, I mean, when you hit the ball, you've got to tighten up on it. It's like bunting a ball in baseball, you know, if you don't. If you don't firm up at the moment of contact, you're not going to, you know, get the reaction on the ball. It's going to dampen it instead of transferring the energy. So, anyway, I just wanted to do a recap on that, and uh, it was fresh on my mind. Those cues that, that Keith, uh, you know, um, uh, I'm pretty sure they're really, really good. Uh, my partner's interested in buying one, and he may already bought it. Because, you know, he's got the money and everything. He was just uh, wanted my opinion, and I gave it to him. So, you know, I, it's 100% up to him on that. And it's 100% up to you. But if you're looking for a really good cue, I would uh, I would try to get a hold of Keith or, or the, the guy that's behind him. Uh, I've got his address and stuff, but uh, you can find it. He, he posted on my... Uh, Facebook where I was talking about doing the interview with Keith, so you can find it. If there's a will, there's always a way, right? Okay, Rick Tom Tomlinson. I'm a nut about cues and can't stand the hit of LD shafts, especially CF. What is your view on this? Yeah, I don't like low deflection shafts. Carbon fiber, I don't like those either, you know? <laughs> Spending six hundred dollars on a shaft, I think, is uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't, 
It, it's not the money. It's just uh, I describe playing with it like trying to eat a filet mignon with a balloon wrapped around my tongue. Why? <laughs> I want to. I want the taste of a of a steak, but I want the feel of a cue. I mean, it's all in your hands. Remember what Earl Strickland told me? The key to this game is in your hands. It's in your wrist. It's in your release. The elbow's a guide. The shoulder doesn't move, but it coils and releases. And there's a technique I teach called uh, chambering that's actually a martial arts thing that creates tremendous power. But it's, it's a way to coil your shoulder. And then when you go back and go through and release, the elbow guides it. But the shoulder just transfers the energy. You don't want the shoulder to drop. That That is a a, a bad thing. Tim Hogan. Hey, hello, CJ. Well, hello, Tim. Anyway, uh, uh-oh. Shane Van Boning's ears were burning. I was talking good about you, brother. Talking about your grip. How mine's uh, a lot better. <laughs> Not really. You just hold the cue back farther. But anyway, this is CJ. And until next time, remember... You already know, right? The game is the teacher.